Yeah, we did reach 400,000 subscribers this week, and thanks to all of you, I would choose Coutinho. Really? So that and more coming up as myself and Angelina are here for another Q&A this week. Lots of exciting stuff to talk about. We're going to kick off with Morkos Akram, who said, I truly believe that Pogba's style of play fits Bayern. What do you think about this? Love from Egypt. Oh, thank you from Egypt. Um, I think Pogba's style of play would probably fit a lot of teams. I mean, when he's on a good day, you know, you've got someone who is a great finisher, can still contribute defensively, good long shots, key passes. He ticks a lot of boxes. Um, so I, I think for a lot of clubs, you could say, oh, you know, he'd, he'd fit in. Um, I think with Bayern's, um, I don't know, like the way that they play and stuff like that. I think if you look at their squad at the moment, I don't think they particularly need no, Pogba. No, I wouldn't say they um, need I mean, you've got, like in your midfield, you've got, you know, players like Thiago, you've got Muller. Uh, you've got young players like is it Kimmich and I always say his name wrong. Is it Goretzka. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, not that Pogba's particularly old, but I just think, um, you know, a great name like Pogba at a great club like Bayern, yeah, it sounds great on paper, yeah. but I just think his, the way he moves yeah. without being a bit hateful, like the l maybe lack of discipline. I feel like Bayern is a very, like, structured yeah. He doesn't well, really kind of fit the mould. Yeah, and I just feel like I don't think... Also, the fact that at the end of the day, whatever way you look at it, it has been injury-prone recently as well. It's um, He'd fit yeah. in on the pitch because he's a good footballer, but no. Yeah, I, can't, exactly. I can't see them by needing him at the moment, for sure. Yes. Um, okay, so next question from JDL Gaming. Do you think that Barcelona has a pretty good squad apart from the transfers that are going to happen? like they have the likes of Coutinho, Griezmann, who they think are not up to the level. I think playing these players in their respective positions will make a change and they will deliver. I, this is a tough one with Barcelona because you could say by their own standards, they don't have a very good squad mm. because of what Barcelona used to be. But of course, they, that's holding every successor of, you know, especially the Guardiola era, and the early 2010s, uh, 2000 and whatever we are, 2010s, 10s, um, you're holding them to such a ridiculously high standard that not many squads ever will ever live up to that kind of how great they were. I do think they have a good squad. And I think when you pick a best 11 and you look at, you know, a midfield three of Busquets, Arthur and De Jong, mm. who, who, who are great. Busquets is already brilliant. The other two can potentially go on and be great players. Obviously, Messi's still in there. Suarez is a phenomenal striker. If Dembele can, you know, get his bits together. Um, I think, yeah, playing them in their position would help. Um, but I'm not quite sure if they have the need for the likes of Coutinho and Griezmann. I think that just mm -hmm. assuming that these players could fit in wherever they are on the pitch, maybe they're just not those kind of guys. Like, do Barcelona you know, go with a strict two up front, like Suarez and Griezmann. Like they do play 4-4-2 sometimes, but it's a very, very fluid concept. And I don't think mm. Griezmann is able to play across the front line. He is a striker. I think Coutinho isn't able to play across the front line. He's a number 10. So I, you know, defensively, yes, they could do with a few improvements, but I, I think they do have a good squad, but they're definitely not man for man. They're not in the top two or three teams in Europe. Mm. I think when you can play a player for player. Yeah. I'm, I'm not so sure. Um, right, Ankit is up next. He said, who do you think will get the fourth Champions League spot? And who do you think will get the Europa League spots considering competition is so high? Oh, I think when you look at the games, not me just being biased, but it seems like United have got the easiest run because I think they've just got Leicester, Sheffield and Spurs out of like big names, if you want to call the, it. The top ones, um, yeah. So I think if United can pick up the form that they had just when the season got cancelled, well, got stopped, um, I think United could very much challenge Chelsea for that fourth spot. And people will say I'm being biased, but mm. I think United could do it if they bounce back. Yeah. I think those Europa League spots, I do feel like Chelsea and Wolves will hang on to that. I feel like the break may have hindered Sheffield a little bit because, again, they were, the whole season really, they've been doing so well. Um, Spurs, obviously they do have players back from injury, so maybe could challenge, but 
I feel like what you were saying about the Bundesliga, like not much seems to have changed. Yeah. Things just kind of carried on as usual. And I have a feeling that's going to happen. So, yeah, I would say maybe United getting that spot and then Chelsea and Wolves in, in fifth and sixth. I'm, I'm going to go United and Wolves in fifth and sixth. I think Chelsea are going to hold on to it. I mm, think just, yeah. I think they've done so well and I can't see too much changing. I mean, unless one team comes back and goes, what is it, nine for nine? and wins all their games and surprises mm. us all, I can't see a huge amount changing. Yeah, true. Okay, so next up is a transfer question from Yvonne Lloyd. So out of 10, rate these transfer rumours happening. So number one is Kai Havertz to Bayern Munich. Well, actually, I don't see that happening this summer. I mean, I, I mean in the long run... <sighs> yeah, in the long run, potentially. I mean, they're not keeping Coutinho and in a few years when Muller's a little bit older. This summer, I don't think so. I'm going to go two. Okay. Damn. That's brutal. Um, Grealish to Spurs. Um, no. I'd like it, but I can't see it happening. Four. Um, Koulibaly to City. Three. I don't think they're going to splash that kind of money. Um, and if he is available, I think someone else might come in for him. And Martinez to Barcelona. Yeah, this one's got, yeah, this one's yeah. written all over it. Got, got a yes mm -hmm. written all over it. I'm going to go eight for Martinez to Barcelona. There's okay. so many rumours that he's already agreed a deal, um, and especially if they get rid of Griezmann, um, mm. which, which isn't a rumour, I just hypothetically. Yeah. I think Martinez is definitely in the future, yeah. Okay, so next from Pasha the Great. Great name. Um, Chelsea is right now being linked with a lot of left backs such as Chilwell, Alex Tells, and Nicholas. Sorry, I'm going to get this name wrong. Tag Tagliafico, I'm going with. But Boom. which is the best option for them? Personally, I feel it is the name Angelina can't say because <laughs> he is cheaper than others and is real and is a really solid left back. Um, okay, well, cheaper doesn't necessarily mean better. Um, but yes, yeah, certainly, certainly from that, from what I read the other day, about 85 million for Ben Chilwell is stupid. Yeah. That sounds like a stupid bit of paper talk. I mean, I'm sure he's not going to go for that much. There was other rumours that he's told Brendan Rodgers he wants to leave Leicester. Um, Alex Tellers looks to be nailed on for PSG at the moment um, for around 20 to 25 million euros. Look, out, out of all of them, and I know, you know, sometimes we tend to overrate English players um, somewhat. I think Chilwell would be the best signing out of them for Chelsea, even if he costs more. He's an England international who plays already in the Premier League, has proved himself in the Premier League, right? Starts for a Premier League team that, uh, for all intents and purposes, is going to finish one position above Chelsea, right? Or two or three positions above Chelsea. Um, you know, they're taking a quality left back from a rival at a brilliant age with even more potential Someone who doesn't have to settle in like Teles or Taliafico would. Um, those two are coming from, you know, no offence, slightly less competitive leagues in, in Portugal and Holland. If all of them, the best option, if you're taking away, you know, how much they cost and who's going to be the best footballing option, especially with Chelsea's youthful English setup under Frank Lampard, Chilwell would be a fantastic option. Whether or not he'll leave Leicester is obviously yeah. up to him. Um, another question altogether, but certainly I think he'd be the best. Um, mm. Next up, Jamie Minecraft has said, what player are you keeping an eye on when the Premier League returns? Ooh, there's a lot. Um, I think names that probably spring to mind are people, well, players that were injured. Um, so I think, obviously for me, um, Rashford will be a great comeback. That will be very exciting to watch. I also think it'd be interesting to see Kane come back as well. Um, and because, like what we were saying, Tottenham are kind of on that, kind of brink of with the points like can yeah. he maybe push forward and get some decent results and maybe other teams will be unlucky is he gonna especially as well with all the transfer rumors and things going on is that going to affect him in any way um i think yeah probably the player i'll i would be out of my own outside yeah. of the own team that would be keeping my eye on the return Out outside mm -hmm. of tottenham i'm gonna actually say bruno fernandez Yes. There was a lot of hype and he did very, very well when he came in. He did brilliant. Mm -hmm. It was only like going? four or five games, yeah. wasn't it? So it's like... And everyone's saying, oh, best signing of the season or put him in the Premier League 11. 
Can he do it then? Are these next nine games going to still be brilliant? So I'm going to... No, no pressure or anything. I'm not pressuring him. Yeah. Um, I just, I'm, I'm interested to see whether he'll he'll continue you know, this kind of form. Um, yeah, players returning from injury as well. I'm interested to see how the likes of Jack Grealish do in the relegation fight. He's been there before and been on the wrong side of it yeah. um, when he made his breakthrough. Um, and also a few more... Um, a few more sort of around the league. Um, yeah. It's probably not that interesting to see them just generally playing. I think as well, maybe Newcastle, you know, with this takeover talk, a certain player is going to be thinking, right, I need to um, play for put my in a future. bit more effort here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're probably right, actually. <laughs> Before Cavani swoops in and uh, takes over. <laughs> uh, right, next up, Lucas M11 has said, who do you think will win the Premier League's Golden Boot? Ooh, so I think Vardy's leading isn't it 19 a? yeah yes um i can't see him slowing down um i'm i'm trying to think we've then got what like abamyang aguero salah i think aguero after a little rest might um come back with a couple of goals for city because i think they'll be wanting to challenge um, well, not challenge for the title, but as in finish with strongly. Leicester. Yeah, finish strong and not have Leicester maybe try and pip them to the post. Um, but you know what? I have got faith in, in Vardy. I think he's going to carry on um, scoring goals for Leicester. And you know what? Good for him. I'm, I'm happy for him. I like, because it seemed like he had this, you know, one or two seasons where it was like goals, goals, goals. And then he went like a little bit quiet yeah. and then like he's come back. You know what? Good for him. Yeah, I, 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 would, I would think Vardy. I mean, there's always like the shock where someone just bangs a hat trick as soon as yeah. they come back in, and you're like, oh, okay, they're in the race. But I think consistency wise, yeah, you'd, Vardy's probably the most likely. Yeah. Especially if Definitely. Leicester hit their top form. Uh, right, Matt, Mad Row King has said if you got to see one player still playing back at their best, who would it be? I would choose Coutinho. Really? Ooh. Out of everyone? I mean, no offense to Coutinho, but there's loads no. of players playing back at their best. <laughs> Um, there are a lot of players worse than mm, Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, the one that obviously comes to mind for me, and just as a football fan, not even for my team, but Alexis Sanchez, that has been a fall. That was a nosedive. Race. Oh, my God. I feel sorry for the guy. Like, you think about, you know, when he was playing at Arsenal, um, you know, the goals that he scored, the presence that he had. And now he's just like this guy that sits at home and just like posts selfies with his dog and it, with his dog. Plays the piano. Like, yeah, and plays the piano and just, you know, I, 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 I feel sorry for him and I don't know if it's one of these cases where he's just lost his, his legs and yeah. his pace and he's not really been able to recover from it. You know, obviously the injuries. I was really hoping that he would be able to go over to Italy. I thought it would suit him better. He'd be able to revive his career. Not even necessarily come back to United, but still get, you know, even if he didn't stay in Italy, got a move that was still decent and respectful of how well he's done in the past. But it's not happening. And I just, I, it's just, I'll be honest, it's just a sympathy thing. I feel bad for him. And I'm, it'd be nice to see him doing all right. And yeah. I'm going to go with Cristiano Ronaldo. Oh, okay. Just, he's doing he's doing absolutely fine at Juventus, you know, considering he's thirty five as well. Um, Want to rewind the clock a bit? <laughs> he's doing fine. I would just love to see Cristiano Ronaldo like prime Ronaldo when he was yeah. doing his thing at Real, like basically for the whole nine years he was there. Yeah, I just that was always super fun for me to watch. So mm -hmm. I'm going to choose the prime Ronaldo again. Fair enough. Here come oh, the, here come okay. the Messi fans. <laughs> I know you are doomed. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. Messi is also very good. We support both <laughs> of them here. We're not childish enough to just go crazy about one of them and hate the other. <laughs> okay, so this is from Hmm K. Literally. Sounds like, sounds like a, a South Park fan. <laughs> um, so, what is it like for one football to reach 400k after all the amazing work put in over the years? It's great. It is fantastic, and yeah, we did reach 400,000 subscribers this week, and thanks to all of you. So, road to 500k, hit the subscribe button, <laughs> and we'll make it there. Um, yeah, no, it's really good. I mean, obviously, you know, it's been a few months with you, and a few years for me. Um, I just think it's really good to see that people enjoy the kind of stuff that we're putting out. It's exactly. Su it, it's super fun. I, I mentioned on the 
on the community tab. Like, we hope that everyone enjoys watching them, you know, and has as much fun watching them as as much fun that we have making them. Exactly. Making all the videos. It's super mm -hmm. cool to see like a work pay off and that everyone gets involved and yeah, as I say. But there is, I will also shout out to the rest of the team at One Football because we. I'm not sure if many people know. I'm sure they do, but like we're a footballing app. Yes. So there's like hundreds of people that work at One Football. A lot of people, yes. yeah. Doing the work on the app and, you know, doing all sorts of other important, interesting business stuff, which I'm not too well versed on. Um, but yeah, everyone at One Football, and then everyone knows producer Ryan. We've got Paddy yeah. and Nico. We've got other um, YouTube channels. So if you want German content, we have one, Italian, um, Portuguese. So yeah, there's a there's a massive operation. So it's not just me and Angelina sitting. Yeah, here. not just us at our desk. Just getting, up. just happened to get a channel to 400k. There's a yeah. super <laughs> amount of work from everyone. Um, so yeah, it's it's super cool. Obviously, a massive Instagram page as well that you guys can follow. Um, with a great team behind that too. So it's a real team effort, just like yeah. in football. Yeah, that was good. That, that was good an analogy. Excellent oh. answer. Fantastic. I know. We don't have a. We don't have like a Messi or Ronaldo. We're a team. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're a team. We're a Sheffield United. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Lastly, but not least, yes. So thank you to all of you. Um, lastly, but not least, Aviv Lamech Kalambi has said, uh, "What languages can you speak? Slash, are interested to learn? Or well, they've thrown a few good ones here." Okay. So I speak Spanish. Um, I am obviously being in Berlin. I am interested to learn German. I can speak a little bit of French, but it's been a while since I've done that. So, yeah. I've forgotten everything I learned at school in terms yeah. of French. I just, there's a few little phrases that just spring to mind. Yeah, I think I could order like a croissant you know, and that's about it. About what you do on the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, I, I, my, yeah. my, my German's all right. It's nothing spectacular. Mm. I think the I think I appeared on the German channel once. And it was like it was like um, like really short questions. I just gave short answers, and that was about it. If you could better, learn better one language, which would it be? If I could learn a language, um, I think it probably would be German. Um, I would also be really interested to learn a language that's like totally different. I.e., yeah. it's not the same. But but you know, like Mandarin, I think it would Korean. be really interesting because that is just, yeah, that's just like a totally yeah. different like world. It's a totally different game. So, yeah. That'd be super cool. Uh, they've also said, um, what countries would you like to visit? Um, I would would love to, oh God, there's quite a lot of places I'd love to visit. Um, oh God, I don't know. I would probably go for Pick Brazil. One. Brazil. Yeah, I'd probably go for Brazil because I just think a lot of history, a lot of culture, football-wise, very interesting. Yeah. Watch a few documentaries on it. So yeah, I'll go. To I'm going to go with Japan. Yeah. Good Japan looks bloody cool. Um, and lastly, mm. if you started your own company or app, what would it be about? Oh, I don't know. Don't oh, say my football. God, that's so hard. <laughs> The no. set up a rival <laughs> yeah. football app. I think uh, the managers would want a word. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I can. I would. Rob oh my god, that is so hard. Mm. I. I can't think of anything. No, I think one thing that I. This is like a really weird one, but one thing that I. I'm sure there probably are apps for this, yeah. but. You know, like if you're cooking something or you're making like a smoothie or something mm. like that and like you've got to like Google recipes and go to all these different websites, I'd like some kind of app that would just kind of, I don't know, I, again, I'm sure there's probably is something like this, so let me know if there is, but you can kind of store everything in. I don't know. Huh. Maybe something like that. That's a bit of a rubbish one. Um, no, that's yeah. not good. I always thought that, that, that a food app would be good if you could scan not like, maybe scan foods at, like restaurants and it could tell you all the ingredients that are in it yeah that'd be quite cool i think that'd be interesting because people are allergic mm. to a lot of stuff and instead of like yeah. pestering your waiter with like a million questions mm. each, each food with each item on the menu would have a qr code and you just beep it with your phone and it tells you everything that's in this this, Good this dish if anyone's watching 
Don't steal that idea. <laughs> yeah, don't steal it. We're going to work on that yeah. right now. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Well, thank you anyway for all of your questions. And as we mentioned, your support in reaching 400,000. That is awesome. Uh, yeah, every Wednesday night in the community tab, we will leave a post where you can leave your questions for Friday's Q&A. Um, but yeah, from myself and Angelina, that is all. Have a great weekend and we'll see you guys next week.